Thank you for that great question. In 1926, Nikola Tesla predicted that 47 years later, April 3rd, 1973, that we would be working with mobile phones that are as small as those phones you would put in your pocket. No one believed that. And that's where the world has come from. Six, in, the, in the 1960s, when the internet evolved, the internet revolution, no one believed that. Five billion people later would be connected to the internet. That 5.36 billion people today will be moving with mobile phones. Now, that is the world of progress in technology and the internet. Every community that will not be digitally connected today will suffer from backwardness, will suffer from small economies, will suffer from unemployment and financial strength. Therefore, the leadership of the world should focus today on bringing digital connectivity to their people, moving the internet to their people, and basically making sure that all their people at least are digitally literate. And that's what we call the movement from the web one of the internet to the web through where the world is. Now, as the basic infrastructure grows, finance grows, medicine grows, construction grows, education grows, but all those must be on the bottom line, fixed on the internet and literacy of the computer, or what we call digital literacy. Now, those levels are very low in Africa and in certain parts of Asia, and that is why we are slowing down. Even when we have great brains in Africa, even when we have great people in Africa, even when we have a young population, the biggest young population of the world is partly in Africa, is in Africa and in Asia. If we do not digitally educate them, then we are seated on the time. Now, here comes a conflict between the young great brains in African innovation and the status quo, which are the central government, central banks. It comes to crypto. Did you know that the cryptocurrency revolution accounts or accounted at its peak for over three trillion dollars in the market? And even at its lowest as it is today, it is trading at about 1.7 trillion. Now, this is much bigger than what Africa has been trading around with for a greater part of its time. Combining the entire GDP of Africa comes to about 3.2 to 3.8 trillion dollars. Now, cryptocurrency alone, which is part of the internet, what we call the Web3 internet now, through blockchain, trading blockchain, the non-fungible tokens, the metaverse, the play to earn, which is gamification, the decentralized finances, are some of the things that we are talking about. And the earlier Africa and other growing economies embrace this, the more we close the gap between primitivity or backwardness and modernization to create employment for the young people. There are very many young innovators all over Africa that are trying to make innovations in the environmental sector, whether it be it industrialization, medical sector, but they cannot achieve this, even be it tourism, if they do not know how to use the internet. Are there some fraudsters on the internet? Yes, just like everywhere. The only things that governments have to do is to empower these people with the digital levels to detect to read, to analyze, to access information and abetted. How do you do that? By making internet as cheap as possible and as accessible as possible for these young people to access. That is one of the things. Does the digital world have merit? Yes. It is, uh, transfor it is transformational, it is dynamic, it is uh, transparent. If you look at uh, the digital assets that are there, for example, you've asked about the question of uh, uh, cryptocurrencies. Yes, that is part of the blockchain. Currencies and assets like tokens are part of the blockchain, the greater world of the Web3 internet in which we are, whereby we are going to see that in the future, what we are seeing now, and I would like everyone you, of you to look back at home. Every young child that is below the age of 13 and 10 at the moment, 
Whenever you sit with them, they are glued up on their phones, on their communication gadgets, be it laptops, be it Kindles, be it phones. And what do you have to help them? The best way we can help them is not to get them engaged in things that will distract them, engage in immorality. So what we will do is to teach them about the web and how they can benefit. Creation of tokens, creation of digital assets, creation of games, play to pay games that are there, work to earn games that will be developed, and finally, the metaverse. We are going to live in a world where you do not actually need to interface with people in education. You sit where you are and you study in a certain university. Now, that is going to make life easy. You've heard about the technological inventions in medicine where people are going to be operated on by robots. Someone sits somewhere and carries out a surgical operation on a patient that is miles and miles away. And this has been greatly done by companies in Israel and companies outside there in Canada, companies in America, companies in China. Therefore, the world is a global village. Ladies and gentlemen, if you want to realize that there is a huge benefit in the web and the internet, look at between now and the 60s, about 50 years ago, all the companies that hold the net worth of the wealth of the world were not even formed. But after the invention of the computer and the internet, all those companies have surpassed even companies that were rich in minerals. I can tell you the list of those companies. Apple, for example, that you all know. North surpassed many of them. Uh, you can talk of Tesla, you can talk of uh, Facebook, which is Meta, you can talk of Twitter, that has been recently bought part of its shares for $44 billion. How many companies have those assets in form of minerals? And this is what we call social capital trade, the role of data, and you cannot accumulate data without having internet. So when you talk of Tesla and other companies that have made advancement in technology of manufacturing, uh, and, and the fight for who controls the web, Starlink, uh, and the revolution of people like uh, Elon Musk uh, in trade, I mean in the internet trade and in the internet world. These are people that have embraced the role of digital currency and that will be the future of the world. When you look at uh, movement of goods, what we would call the basic ordinary trade, look at Amazon and Jeff Bezos, these are success stories in the world. Who knew, amongst them even as well, that 30 years, 40 years ago, the world's wealthiest company would be those that are connected with internet and trade on the internet. Therefore, I would like to urge you all, whosoever is there, that do not block the young brain. Central banks, wherever you are, just do the only basic and noble thing that you have to do. Educate the young people. If you have to cut out those that are doing Ponzi scheme, yes, they are fraudulent. Then identify for them those digital assets that are, free, uh, that are credible for, trade to be, uh, for us to trade in, or for the world to trade in, or for comfortable trade. Therefore, Someone asked me a question. Do cryptos depreciate? Yes, just like any asset. Do they appreciate? Yes, just like any other asset. Gold depreciates, it appreciates. Diamond depreciates, it appreciates. But it's the level of depreciation. That is backed up by demand. Demand and forces of demand and supply. But what can I tell you? It's bringing financial independence that states have been so hard with to maintain because they give you a paper money, they control it in central banks, and they determine whether it has appreciated or depreciated. So if your currency doesn't have value, you cannot blame the people who have gone out to trade in these digital assets, the non-fungible tokens that have been created either out of animals, out of trees, out of celebrities, out of whosoever you can talk about to make them digitally uh, valuable. Therefore, this is a revolution and I can tell you that no one, no one in the world will stop. You can only work within the revolution that is starting and make it better for our children, but you will not be able to stop it. Therefore, I would like to say that I associate myself 
basically with the digital migration that must start with digital literacy. Let's teach our people to know how to use the web, to use it beneficially, and the future is definitely going to be great.